Hi, this is Steve Hill with AIQ Systems. Uh, welcome to this webinar on support and resistance. Today, we're going to be looking at support and resistance, what is and isn't support and resistance, uh, things to look out for, uh, how things are affected as far as volatility, volume, and fake breakouts, uh, also pullbacks to resistance and support levels, and how best to use them. And also, we're throwing some Fibonacci in there as well, which also provides us with that uh, sort of support and resistance. I will do a PowerPoint presentation here to get the session going, and then we'll switch to some live charts and look through the Dow 30, just to give you an idea of how best to utilize support and resistance. The overview support is the price level where a downtrend is expected to pause or due to a concentration of demand or buying interest, it, it sort of levels out at a certain level. It reaches a certain level and then stays at that level, uh, sometimes moving away from it and coming back and testing that level. Resistance is the opposite. You have an uptrend and you're going to pause in that with a, with a concentration of supply and selling interest. So pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, many of us know about support levels, uh, often form at previous lows in the price chart. Uh, most of the technicians can see those lows and they're aware of them and that forms a certain opinion they're trading at that particular time. And we also look again, you know, with how often has it bounced off that previous low level? And again, that can indicate that some buying pressure if it hasn't broken through that previous low. Uh, moving averages or trend lines, trend lines are our best way really of identifying the prior lows. Uh, moving averages, again, it's perhaps a crossover of moving averages gives us some help in that area. So importance of support levels, it's potential buying opportunities, obviously. Um, again, when you have a support level that's breached, it may signal a trend reversal or a continuation of the downtrend. So again, when it says breach, that means it either moves up away from that uh, previous low that is tested, or if it breaks down below that. And again, we'll look at some examples of the breakout to the downside and how do you tell that it's a breakout or if it's just a, a little bit of a, uh, a fudge factor? In fact, volatility can help us decide uh, if the stock is very volatile, then we need to be aware of that when looking at support levels. Again, on resistance levels, um, they happen at previous highs, they look for an area where prices fail to break through multiple times. That often indicates strong selling pressure. Uh, again, we can use technical indicators, retracement uh, in Fibonacci are very useful for this as well. So the importance of resistance levels, again, we saw that provides us with selling opportunities and or an opportunity to go short. Obviously, you know, there are key price levels where supply and demand or uh, imbalance occurs. Uh, traders use these levels uh, for entry and exit points, managing risk, and determining the overall market sentiment. And again, that's why you can use those levels on the indexes as well. And of course, you know, that really helps us uh, both define our risk uh, levels and also our money management by having those levels available to us uh, when we're in a trade already. One thing to be aware of, fake breakouts, uh, price breaks above a resistance level or below a support. Uh, so it's continuing that trend that was in place beforehand. Uh, what can also happen uh, shortly after breakout, the price comes back down, trapping traders who enter the trade. And then the price returns to its previous range. So that does happen. Um, again, just good stops on uh, those particular entries. And you need to give it a little bit more wiggle room. Whipsaw movements. Yeah, so this is often in a, in a trading range. Uh, price action whips between the resistance and support levels and momentarily pops out of those levels and then comes back in again. And so you have to be very aware of that. Again, tight uh, initial entry stops help us uh, getting out of that position if it does do that. Thinly trading markets, obviously most of us do not enter in the thinly trading markets. Um, I would stay clear of that. Um, and the other thing is after hours stuff. Don't be trading or looking at support and resistance after hours because the liquidity is so low. Um, those support and resistance levels are really not valid to our entire day's regular trading. Uh, news events can't be news events. We're bound to see one of those when we look through some stocks. Something causes us to break away from an existing uh, pattern that's in place. Uh, it does happen occasionally. And again, 
not a lot you can do when it has happened, but um, be aware, trade stops help us with that. And uh, market manipulation is kind of uh, very occasionally, although we're not likely to be involved in that, uh, but some attempts by institutions to trigger stop loss orders that we've put in place may happen. Um, testing support resistance, you know, that, again, we're talking about the, the temporary breach of these levels, um, you know, as part of that discovery process. So we need to be aware of that. It's not an exact science. And uh, again, it may fall back within the, the support or resistance level after it's briefly only slightly moved out of that pattern. So really wanted to do that very quickly just to uh, recap something that most of us know, but also uh, reiterate some of the uh, situations we can come across that we have to be aware of in using support and resistance. We're going to bring up AIQ charts, and we've got the Dow 30 stocks that we're going to be uh, scrolling through here. We're going to add uh, volume and volatility. Uh, these are both going to help us in this uh, process of support and resistance decision making. I'm just going to save those as my current indicators. And that's down here, save current indicators. So, so when you're looking at Apple uh, as a, say, for current price action as a possible trading opportunity, uh, I need to frame the last year or so, although more recent price action if, as a swing trader, and I don't like being in the position for too long, um, I would probably give less weight to uh, longer term support and resistance and more weight to shorter term. But let's frame this out. So Apple's recent high over here and here. So this is in December 2023, and this is in July 2023. Uh, you can see with both of those levels there that this was pretty much a topping area. You know, this provided a high level uh, resistance zone. So when price action did come back up to that level in uh, early December, Again, remember the exact science and volatility, you know, because the stock has a modest volatility, we need to have a bit of a fudge factor here. This is close to a breakout, but not enough of a breakout for us to consider that this would be a, a continuation of the move to the upside. Obviously, two things happen here with this move at the end of the upside. Volatility started to fade away, so this is a sign of, of there's less and less buyers actually coming in at that time. And you notice the volume itself until we got to this blowout day at here. Um, let me put the A key on here. This was the kind of the top out day. The volume itself was just at a modest level. And then this next day, there was a massive volume spike on that day and prices just stayed where they were. They really didn't move very much. So there's kind of an attempt to break out to the upside, but really there's enough selling pressure in place going on here. Uh, for this not to break out of there. And of course, price action started to move down from there uh, pretty pretty well. We came back up here close to testing this uh, uh, resistance level again. And again, remember, it's not an exact science. It's close enough. This one's not a huge distance between uh, 196 here and uh, 197.94 here. Uh, so this is close to testing that level again, and it failed. And again, at that point, you know, volatility had been increasing at this particular time. So uh, there was no clear sign uh, what was going to happen here. Uh, it, again, it just failed to do the breakout and prices started to move back down to this level. So let's let's look closely at the more recent price action in 2024 uh, for a decision on perhaps uh, uh, entry or uh, resistance levels on Apple itself. Notice something here. When this price action came back from this uh, resistance level here, and it bounced right off here. I mean, this could be considered, you know, it's not exactly a, a smart looking uh, support level, but it did bounce off that and then come back down and test the same level again. So this really starts to look like a support level. When you're on this date here, when I click this and change the date back to here, you know, there's no indication that this level here was really much of anything. I mean, I could run it through here, it doesn't really tell me a great deal until we get that second hit here, and then it bounces off of there. So now we have a little bit of a support at that sort of 179, 180 level. Apple shoots back up, and that's when it did that failure to get through that resistance level, came back down again. Now remember, this is the one hit on our support. Traders can see this. So we know there's a support level right there. And prices bounced right off of it again. And they came back down again pretty quickly. 
So this is really, this is the third, first, second, third test, and then a fourth test of that level. And a very interesting uh, a descending triangle pattern that's been set up right there. So when this particular price point here, the support level failed at this point here, prices continue to the downside. You notice here volatility was falling off quite a bit. So there was no buyers rushing in at this point. It just continued this downtrend that was in place. There was a spike in volume here and volume started to increase as, as acceleration to the downside. So this breakout, this, this kind of removes this uh, resistance uh, support level and becomes a resistance level now that we've broken through there. So in our current environment, as we move forward here, you notice here that price action, again, we don't have a huge support level down here. This level here is kind of it's been tested once. It comes down to here and it does test this level and moves back up. But now support becomes resistance. So it hits close to this level and bounces off of that prior support level, which is now resistance, comes back down. And again, look at that. It tests that level, bang, and it bounces off of there again. Notice again uh, on the way down here, volume was decreasing on the way down. And we did see that, um, you know, there was a sort of a, a sellers were beginning to, to dry up, even though the volatility was increasing. We get to the bottom down here again, and again, this is that support level now. There's a brief fake out to the downside here. It breaks out through there. But look how high the volatility is. Not surprising. There's going to be a little bit of a fudge factor we need in there. And prices, again, if you were going to enter into a position based upon a uh, bounce off of this support, you would certainly want to do it within this price range here. So once it's, it's finished bouncing off in here, it started to move away again. That's the opportunity to get in there. Volume increases. Uh, volatility is still pretty high. And prices moved a little bit up again, but came back down. So you could have been faked out here, but you'd had this level as your first uh, as your first area of resistance. It didn't really get up to that level, but it's pretty close to it. So stops have to be, again, you need a little bit of a, a again, of a, a wiggle room as far as uh, using this as a resistance level. Uh, you could have been stopped out for maybe even you know, eight to 10 points on Apple. So it comes back down again, and guess what? It's tested that level one more time. And this was on uh, 416. Uh, price action on uh, Apple itself now is, uh, I think today we're running at about 167. So we've kind of still on this level down here at this, uh, what I would call this, this uh, very good looking support line. So the key thing again, uh, if we see volume picking up, uh, if volatility is going to be increasing, we may well see another move to uh, this resistance level and an opportunity to get in again. So Apple is a great stock. And again, if it breaks down, if you get into this stock uh, sometimes in the next few days as it's moved away, height stops up this level, maybe take a third off the table up here uh, or close to this level. And then uh, after that, let the rest run because the next level of resistance, minor resistance here, uh, here, and then this is the major resistance. So there's a little bit more room uh, on the move up there. I mentioned Fibonacci's was another area we can look at for how much the retracements, the retracements are the key thing in my mind. Uh, we need the Fibonacci retracements. We can do it from this peak here down to this area here. And you can see pretty easily that uh, there's this level here, this resistance uh, level, which was a support level, is, is around about the, uh, the 38 level. So you could use that as one level. Uh, you could use uh, the 61.8 as another level also for uh, potential resistance levels if, if the stock keeps moving up. Uh, look at a couple of others in here, a uh, list of more fairly recent Dow Jones 30 stocks. Yeah, let's switch over to Amgen. Uh, this stock doesn't have a lot in the way of uh, uh, interesting support and resistance levels going on. Uh, it tends to move in a fairly orderly fashion. Let's uh, have another look at another one. American Express. Uh, yeah, I put some levels on here from some prior uh, work done on here. Let me just change this back to the last year. Because American Express was, a, again, another stock where up at this level here, at the 179 or so level, was the recent highs and, and attempts to get close to that high to test it. 
again, you know, good volatility means we need a bit of a fudge factor uh, when we're looking at this up here. So if I pop back to my trend line, you know, this is this is the area. You're talking a range of between 181.45 to 179.25. So it's you know, it's a couple of points at a hundred and eighty dollar start. That's your kind of fudge room up there. Um, you know, we have to be aware of that too, if prices get back to that level. And this happened again, this was 2023. That's what we're looking at on the screen here. The interesting area down here, you know, this is an area where there is support. As you can see, this area here, here, and here, uh, there was a minor breakthrough support right here. You can see this at the 143 and the 141. Again, we have to be cognizant of a bit of a fudge factor, fudge factor as far as uh, support and resistance is concerned. Uh, before price action uh, broke out from there. Uh, right now, you know, this was a great breakout from this uh, this double bottom, minor double bottom down here. You know, your movements up to the upside is a little bit of consolidation here at this brief uh, resistance level before prices continued on up. A uh, little pause here, and then we continued on up. And what happened here is, is that we broke out from the more recent high. So these resistance levels here, as you crept up here, if you were in the stock, you might take some money off the table. And then when it broke through to the upside here, you know, some traders might be saying, okay, so we've broken through, it's time to get back in. Had a brief pullback, but again, you know, that's broken out to the upside, fairly solid breakout. And this is our fudge zone here. So it's, uh, it's a pretty good uh, breakout to the upside. And of course, prices continued up from there. Uh, until we got to about almost $190 uh, before falling back down again. So look what happened here. It fell back into the zone. Remember, this is this was zone here. Was our, this was the resistance zone we broke through. It fell back, and this became a support area. Just like that, it came to the support area. And uh, prices bounced off of there and then took off. They really did take off from there. So interesting to see this on the price chart. It's really uh, a great illustration. Um, this this pullback to uh, the previous uh, resistance level is, is something that happens quite often in prices and either continue back down. If you're still in the position here or you've taken some money off the table, uh, if you came from the move down here, you may take some more money off the table here as a precaution. If you'd enter the position here, you may well say, hey, I'm going get, to get stopped out if it breaks down below here. Uh, but as it is, it bounced off of there, probably faked out a, a few folks who had entered in this breakout and um, continued moving up uh, strongly from there. Uh, right now, it's kind of a rounding sort of head and shoulders top forming on the stock. Uh, next ticker up is, uh, oh, we got Boeing here now. Boeing's a great, great example. Um, I've, let me, uh, I've already put some of these uh, levels on this chart because Boeing has had news stories it's a good illustration of how um, a chart pattern can be affected by that. So, you know, let's go back and look a little bit uh, earlier in time. I'll set the date back into the middle of December. Um, this is what's interesting in here is, is that this whole zone in here, this whole zone here, uh, price action is kind of stuck in a, in, a, in a modest range, really, in this area here. It's sort of bouncing around and not really moving around a huge amount. I mean, there's still money to be made if you wanted to trade this, but there's there's nothing fantastic going on here. But we do know that, uh, again, this is a trading range and there's a support and resistance in place. And so we bear that in mind going forward. By the way, there's another level back here, but we won't go back that far because we're more interested in the more recent action than I am. So, you know, yeah, there's recent highs are up here, but we're way away from that because of this. This is a really, you know, measured move to the downside uh, that occurred here. You know, buying opportunities, very hard to see. When it came back down to here, check out what this price action is like here. So we know that this is a, a modest support level right here. Look at the volatility. The volatility was just nothing. There was very little volatility. So there's no sort of imbalance of traders or a pressure coming in. Price action, the volume is just moving along in an orderly fashion. It's an orderly measured move to the downside and doesn't even barely hesitate at that uh, somewhat of a support level. It goes straight down for it. Turns around a little bit here. Remember, I was just saying this is a long-term level back here, support. 
hits there and bounces off and then comes back to this level here uh, before coming back down. And again, this is, in this case, we've got increased volatility. There's more pressure to the downside. So it does blow through this minor support level here and takes us down to this new level here in uh, late October. So let's go forward a little bit. And let's just take it all the way forward. So we've already had this, um, this level here, which had turned out to be a long-term support level. Everything broke down here. We hit a bottom. Uh, this, this just hit the bottom there, and then it came off of this bottom. There is not a lot here as far as support and resistance that indicates to me that this is a real bottom. This area here, when we broke out here, broke out of this prior support and resistance level, is, is a better area to be in on a trade. You know, it hit here again. Notice it did this here and it did this here, faked it out and then came back up and then gapped right out through there. So pretty good to be in the trade here. Minor um, resistance here, so you would take some money off the table possibly, and right here as well, and then let the rest ride. And again, when we get back up to here, you know, we're in we're in unknown territory. Um, other money management stops would be uh, more appropriate since we don't have a, uh, a reasonable um, area where we can see that this is resistance. As it is, it did reach this level and just stayed around up here. Started to pull back with volume increasing on the way down. News stories were uh, a thing for Boeing uh, and throughout this period here. Volatility increased rapidly. Price action came down through to this support level here. So remember, this had this support level back over here several times. And it waffled around in here for a fairly long period of time. Not a great deal of information in there for us. You know, if it bounced off here as a possible entry into uh, a position on Boeing off of this support, the volatility was increasing, the volume was increasing, which seemed like a good move. But it only got to this level here, never even got up to this minor resistance before it fell back down and tested it again. So it would be more prudent to wait for more tests. But this particular start, Boeing having had so many uh, external factors uh, influencing price action, there was no good reason uh, for it to break through the support level, it seems, until we got to the stories uh, in this period here where it just burst right through. And again, so this one's a real difficult one to, to even think about a trade. You get this sort of uh, descending, this is a longer term descending triangle that was in place. And again, you know, classic uh, breakout of a descending triangle is quite often to the downside, but occasionally to the upside. So that had to be bare and not borne in mind as well. Once price broke through, again, this area has become a resistance. It tries to get back up there. Notice how it came down to this support level. Uh, so if you were short, you know, this would be a place you'd be thinking about getting out. Uh, came back up, you know, if you'd gone long here off of this minor support, again, you've got to be cognizant of here, this resistance level, because it blew right off of that and headed right the way back down uh, in a pretty, pretty solid move to the downside in, in, uh, in, in union with the market at the time, when in fact, there's still the market serving in that uh, downside direction. So uh, again, Boeing, another great example. We can see the support and resistance in action. Uh, on this particular stock, um, when you do a Fibonacci, especially if you do one uh, on the retracement side, uh, certainly from this level here down to this level here, because this was our initial bottom here, it really never really got back up to the 30%. So there's never really been anything on the Fibonacci to give us a, a good indication of what might be happening there. Let's get rid of uh, this one. No, let's, not, let's move on to another stock. Let's move on to uh, next stock in our list. Let's have a look here. Uh, Caterpillar. Caterpillar had a, you know, they've got a little bit, this is longer term picture here. Uh, this is the support bounced off of there very nicely. Not a lot else up here to give us much indication uh, for support and resistance levels. I mean, this, obviously this area here provided us with a little bit of resistance until it finally broke through up here. Uh, right here, we're, we're in sort of a new, all-time high so you know that's going to provide some resistance going forward but not much else as far as uh, giving indications of getting in or getting out uh salesforce uh some you know resistance levels back here support level not a big long support level in there but again it's sort of blowing down to this level here um up here 
you know, you had this high price reached up here. Prices have been sort of struggling to break out of that pattern before they fell down here. This was, um, again, we're getting ourselves into that range. Once it broke below that range, all bets are off until you get down here as far as the next support level. Uh, let's have a look at Cisco. Yeah, it's a bit messy. You know, resistance, resistance. This is a modest resistance here. Uh, not a lot going on. We do know there's a good bit of support right at this price level. But there's also a good bit of resistance at this level. So breakouts above here or down here are the anticipated uh, entry points. Chevron, again, a nice little bottoming here. One, two, three, four tests, a fifth test over here. It broke out of this sort of trading range, but we're drawn in here at this point here. Uh, volatility, you notice volatility, again, in these trading range, the volatility just falls off. There's indecision, nothing happening. You get a little bit of a spike in volume just as we move out of that trading range. Um, you could have got in here for perhaps a you know, three or four point move would be your maximum for the upside on this. I believe this level here didn't try it and provide any sort of resistance at all. Uh, right now, you know, price actions, again, this line doesn't really do us any good. Um, we came back down and tested this same level again. And once it broke out again through here, not a lot. The volatility again on the move to the downside, the downside segment here was fairly flat. So not a lot of uh, indication of things that might be changing. Almost a little U-shaped bottom, but it did test that support and moved off on a little bit of an increase in volume on that day and prices moved up uh, from that point. And let's have a look at one more. Uh, Disney, interesting pattern. I've um, got lots of trend lines on here for support and resistance in this range down here. Like when it broke out from here, but it got resistance back at this level here and then waffled along inside here. Again, you got, you know, these, these are areas where I've drawn trend lines already to give me some support and resistance levels. Up here, not a lot I can say other than this is possible support level uh, as Disney makes its way down. And we won't know about, you know, break out of that high, won't know how that is until we get anywhere near back to there again. Let's do a couple more in here. And uh, yeah, down, not a lot going on in that one. Oh yeah, Goldman Sachs was good because I like this. This is again, we've got this trading range going on here. Uh, price action got stuck in this range here. One test, two tests, three tests, four, five, six, before it broke out here. It broke out on tremendously low volatility. So not a lot really going on there and failed almost immediately and created a three attempts at a high point here before we fell back into the uh, just broke down below this sort of uh, now a uh, support level. Uh, right now, we're kind of stuck in this uh, sort of level again. But not a lot of information in there, other than the fact that we now have a new high in place at the top. Uh, we'll do a couple more. Uh, Home Depot. Let's uh, move on to one where we got a bit more interesting uh, support and resistance levels. This is Honeywell is quite good because we have this uh, lovely topping area up here. Uh, we know that's definitely going to be our uh, outer range, uh, the outer range for our uh, uh, resistance on move to the upside. There's a more recent uh, support area in here, and this is quite good. So we know that it's sort of bounced to that level. We have to wait for a day or two to see where it goes from here. If it does bounce off of here, there's an opportunity for it to move. We have resistance uh, mostly up towards the 209 level although minor resistance in the uh, 207 level here from this, these two highs. So you, yeah, a bit of room there for a move to the upside. And again, that's uh, if you go along when this breaks out, again, the volatility uh, has been increasing on this stock. So if it does, uh, the volatility starts to fade a little bit, it's likely to begin moving back to the upside. One more stock and then uh, we'll call it a day. Uh, oh, IBM. Yeah, so lots of lots of uh, support and resistance in the past in IBM. Let me just get rid of these. Right now we have this area up here. This is our topping area. We notice some pretty good resistance at that level. Not really a great deal of support. That's kind of a minor support level in there. But this thing's still moving down. The longer term things over here don't provide us a lot of information uh, because it's been moving in a sort of measured way up and down. 
Uh, I don't see a lot of uh, support and resistance levels in this price pattern, yeah. except for in the most recent uh, three months here. So that's uh, just a synopsis really on uh, support and resistance, uh, a little bit of from Fibonacci as well. Volatility is always good to keep an eye out. You know, when it peaks out like this and fades away, then there's less, you know, there's less battling going on between the buyers and sellers. It's fairly orderly. Uh, when the volatility is really, really low, prices, as we know, tend to start moving again to the upside. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, look at this price pattern here. It's uh, volatility has been sort of heading on down. And there's a possibility if it gets to this level here, it'll bounce off of there if the volatility behaves. So that's it. This is Steve Hill with AIQ Systems. We'll be doing another session in early May, uh, moving on to some candlestick strategies. Have a great evening.